Okay, so now that we have a brief and basic understanding of the library website, we're going to go ahead and dive into an academic database. And in this case, we'll look at Academic Search Premier. Before I do that though, I also want to encourage you to ensure that you have a basic or foundational understanding of the topic that you are actually interested in reviewing. If you haven't done that yet, then you really want to probably pursue some background information. And so background information is a term that we use to describe the sort of summary based information that you can find about subjects. And, and if you're reviewing something like say a film or, or a book, um, you can generally find really useful background information through resources like Wikipedia. Wikipedia is an excellent um, online resource. It's actually statistically uh, the most accurate encyclopedia available online. Um, it's not useful for, for actual hard research, but it's a really great place to dip your toes into the water and learn about the subject that you're interested in. Uh, so if you haven't done that, go ahead and pause this video, go over to a resource like Wikipedia or, or Google and try and dive into the actual subject that you're looking at. If you have done that already, kudos to you and we'll go ahead and look at Academic Search Premier. So Academic Search Premier is a uh, is a general database. It has information about a lot of different resources from across academic disciplines. You can find information in here related to the humanities, the sciences, medicine. It's really all encompassing and it's a great place to start your research for that reason. For, for our purposes, I'm also reviewing uh, uh, artistic creation. In this case, I'm going to uh, review the film Disclosure. It's a Netflix documentary about the way that trans people have historically been represented in American media and the way that that shapes our structures, our policies, our laws, and our individual biases towards trans people, as well as trans people's own conceptualization of their own gender identities. And I'm going to click Advanced Search. So the Advanced Search function here in Academic Search Premier, and if you've used any other EBSCO databases, you might be familiar with this interface already. This allows you a, a, the opportunity to break your search up and into really precise concepts. And the way I like to think about this is I break down each of the boxes in the academic search field by concept. So I have, I have this case, I have concept number one, concept two, and so on. Concept is going to be an idea or a premise that you are taking to your research. And in this case, we're talking about trans people. So transgender people might actually be a key concept in my search, right? So that's going to really inform the directions that I go when I use the databases. So we'll start with, a, with actually looking at the way that trans people are represented in film. And, and we can do that by using our concept boxes here. And we'll start with the first one. We'll say transgender. It's very clear, right? Very, very specific. And you'll notice a couple things already that I've placed this in quotation marks. And just as a reminder, in case you weren't familiar already, quotation marks tell a database that we're looking for its exact phrasing. And I could actually, this is really useful when you're using more than one term. So in the, in the case that I might say transgender woman, right? Or transgender women of color. The database knows that this is a single thing. This is, this is actually one subject. It's not a conglomeration of words. It describes a single phenomenon. So we, Mostly, we can get by using quotation marks as a way to delineate our search. So we'll say transgender. And the second thing we want to look at is, let's say we're looking at media representation because we want to see how closely the film Disclosure describes the um, relationship between trans people and depictions in the media. And so we'll say, we're going to actually go transgender and media. We won't worry about quotation marks. 
and we're going to add some or operators in here. And or, in case you weren't familiar, or is 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 part of a set of op of what we call Boolean operators. There are three Boolean operators: and, or, and not. When I use and, which I am doing here, you'll see it, it's in the side boxes. I'm telling a database that I want both concepts. The database must return results that include both of these ideas. It can't return either of them. It must return both of them, which means my research gets narrowed. If I use the OR operator, then I'm telling the database that it can take either this bit of information or this bit of information, which expands my research. And we're not, we're not going to worry about the not operator right now because its use is a bit limited. And again, we're going to select full text and we're going to search. Okay, so this, this is actually really encouraging, right? We have 663 search results. That's quite a bit. And, and that leaves us with with the uh, with some opportunities or options here we we want to make the most of our situation and, and so we're going to kind of limit this and we're, we're going to cut it down some um that's what these limiters over here on the side are for and and like let me let's look at this let's say 1990 maybe we want research that's a little newer than that right like 1990 at this point that's that's 30 years ago so we'll say that we only want information from 2010 to 2020. And, and, you know, there's not really a role to the amount of time that you should use. It depends upon your subject or your discipline, and it depends on what you're looking at. But 10 years might be a good rule of thumb to follow for a project like this one. And you'll see that cuts our results down by 220. Um, and we, we can do a few other things, too. We could actually look through, and we, let's say we only want very specific types of sources. And we want academic journals, newspapers, and magazines. And we're going to update. And now we have 410 results. So this is this is particularly useful. We can look through these. We might see, you know, maybe there's something in here that catches our eye. And it kind of looks to me like there's, we're not really finding information that's explicitly about our research needs. So I'm, not, I'm going to go up here and I can actually limit my search further by using a third set concept. And, and maybe I'm, I'm really interested, I, I'm learning in, in, in representation and I'm interested in the ways that having a trans person play a trans person or not might affect how viewers perceive a film. So we'll go ahead and choose search. And in this case, we'll look through here and this, this paper looks like it might really fit with our research needs. More than a media moment, the influence of televised storylines on viewers' attitudes towards transgender people and policies so really fits within the comfort zone that I have. And, and you know what's nice is you only have three resources that you have to find. And in this case, we found one, so we only need two more if this one works and because we selected full text only we have access to the full text we can click on that here and there are a few other things that you can make use of in this uh, that once you've found a paper like this and in the next video we're going to take this paper and we're going to do those things so stay tuned <laughs>